Hello people, in this video, let us look at the indications for caesarean, why exactly caesarean should be done, okay. So, um, guys, understand one thing that uh, some people want to say that caesarean section is totally unnecessary and it is done only in obstructed labor, etc. But that is not the case. There are a lot of cases where caesarean section is indicated. Look at this. Like, if there is a placenta previa, right, especially a central one, then you don't want the fetus to go through it. Look at placenta previa here. The placenta is blocking the outlet, isn't it? So this, how can you deliver normally, right? So this becomes a indication for cesarean section. Or if vaginal delivery is unsafe for the fetus or the mother. So the vaginal delivery is unsafe for the mother. Why? If she has cardiac issues, etc. Why is it unsafe for the fetus? Let's look at that. The fetus could be in distress and it needs to get out soon, right? So, uh, let's look at the absolute indications of cesarean section, guys. Now, we are looking at this must-do category, okay? Must-do. Why you should do? Must-do. Absolute indications. Vaginal delivery is not possible, okay? Um, like central placenta previa. Just now we said the placenta is blocking the e exit, right? Contracted pelvis, cephalopelvic disproportion. So, the mother's pelvis and the baby's head. So, this is baby's head and this is mother's pelvis. Totally disproportionate. The baby's head is so big, it will never go through this pelvis. It will become an obstructed labor. So, a cephalopelvic disproportion, CPD is it, is it called as? That is an absolute indication for, um, absolute indication for cesarean. Okay, then pelvic mass which is obstructing, right? There is some obstruction. Obviously, there is an obstruction. Like a cervical or a broad ligament fibroid. There is some fibroid there, right? How will the baby go through it? Then, Advanced carcinoma of the cervix. So, what happens in advanced carcinoma of cervix? If I'm not wrong, guys, they want to do a hysterectomy. So, as well get the baby out kind of a thing. Okay, if there's advanced carcinoma cervix, do a cesarean. Vaginal obstruction like atresia or stenosis. What does this mean? Stenosis means narrowed opening. Atresia is kind of, uh, uh, what do you mean by atresia? The orifice or the passage of the body is closed or absent. It is closed or absent. Stenosis is narrow, but look at atresia. Atresia is kind of closed or absent. It says closed. Stenosis is kind of narrow. Okay. So, a vaginal obstruction is there. Atresia is there. Stenosis is there. Then you will have to do a cesarean section. This is absolute indications. Come on, repeat the absolute indications of cesarean section. Cephalopelvic disproportion. Placenta previa. Then, um, vaginal obst uh, obstruction, what is that? Stenosis, atresia, some pelvic tumor or some obstruction is there basically. And we also talked about uh, advanced carcinoma of the cervix, CA cervix, okay. So, five things we got, is it? Look at this, yes, five things we have got. Excellent people, now let's move on to relative indications. Relative indications means can do category, right? Can do. So, you can do, can consider. Vaginal delivery may be possible, but risks to the mother and baby are high. So, cephalopelvic disproportion, which is a relative disproportion. Okay, they are not saying it is a complete disproportion. Cephalopelvic disproportion is coming here, is it? Then what was this called as? Contracted cephalopelvic disproportion. Both they have written here. Okay. Then, previous cesarean delivery. So, if there has been a previous cesarean delivery, to do a vaginal birth, you should have a lot of uh, help, support system and uh, all the advancements, right? If you if you do not, then you can consider a repeat cesarean section, okay? Then, fetal heart rate is non-reassuring, that's fetal distress. So, it is diffic uh, difficult for the baby, right? So, you are putting the baby's life, uh, giving the baby's life priority and you are doing a cesarean section for the baby's sake. Then dystocia, that is shoulder dystocia, where the baby's shoulder are kind of stuck, is it? So this dystocia can be because of three things, the passenger, the passage or the power. So the passenger is the fetus, right? This is my uh, how I am drawing the fetus, this is smiling. Basically, uh, this may be because of three things, there is a large fetus that is the passenger is too large or the pelvis is too small that is the passage is too small or inefficient uterine contractions. The uterine contractions are not sufficient to get this passenger out. 
So this is dystocia could be there because of these three things. Then you can consider a cesarean section. It is more like a relative, relative indication for cesarean section. Guys, are you focusing? Till now, what did we look at? Relative indications for cesarean section, guys. Cephalopelvic disproportion, previous cesarean section. Then we saw fetal distress, like fetal heart rate is not a re, uh, reassuring you. Then dystocia, very good. What was the first one we saw in um, the relative indication? Cephalopelvic disproportion. Okay, so we have covered this. Then coming to antepartum hemorrhage, that is, that can indicate placenta previa. Placenta previa is an absolute indication, isn't it? Or an abrupt show placenta. Okay, where the placenta is separating. But placenta previa was there here and they are seeing the central placental previa. If it is in the center, then it is an absolute indication. Okay. Here in general they have written placenta previa, antipartum hemorrhage. So she is bleeding before her delivery. Malpresentations, see malpresentations like breach etc. And then shoulder, that is transverse lie, bro presentation. Bro presentation, um, if it is a bro presentation which is consistent bro presentation, isn't it supposed to be a cesarean section anyways? If you remember our bro presentation video, if it is a persistent bro presentation, how will the mechanism of labor be? There is no mechanism of labor in posterior bro presentation. Okay, so if it is bro, uh, bro presentation, but if it is a posterior bro, pos bro position, only then you are considering C-section. Looks like anterior is still fine. Okay, so, so in the case of persistent bro presentation, there is a chance of obstructed labor. It is an important cause, cause of rupture of uterus, uh, rupture of uterus. Okay, guys, so that is why you have to consider C-section in this case. Okay. Elective cesarean section with persistent bro presentation. Okay. That's why I tell you guys, there are a few people who are telling, uh, putting down scientific medicine and they are saying uh, some Indian medicine is good and cesarean sections are done just for money, etc. But this is something that you have to observe that it is, uh, they, these are some things that they don't tell you. Okay, so bro presentation, so mal presentations can be a relative indication. Then coming to failed surgical induction. So you induced the labor, but there is a failure of the induction, then you will have to, or there is failure of the labor to progress, then you have to consider cesarean section. Obviously, you will try all other ways, I am guessing. Bad obstetric history. So this lady has recurrent fetal loss. Right, so it's a very precious pregnancy kind of thing. Right, then hypertensive disorders like preeclampsia, pre severe eclampsia. She's having fits, uncontrolled fits are there. Then how do you even push this person into labor? You have to get them out, get the baby out, isn't it? Now, guys, where are we? Hypertensive disorders over. Lastly, medical gynecological disorders like gynecological disorders. They are saying that. You, uh, these people have some malignant pelvic tumor or they have some obstruction, right? They can have a um, vesico-vaginal fistula, right? That is the bladder and vagina have a fistula, is it? And how will the baby come through the vagina? So there could be a mechanical obstruction because of a tumor or a... Uh, okay, wait. So guys, there could be a mechanical obstruction because of a tumor etc. There could be a vesico-vaginal fistula or these people, uh, the mothers can have a heart disease like coactation of iota, Marfan syndrome etc. They could have diabetes which is uncontrolled. So what happens if diabetes is uncontrolled? You will have to keep your control, uh, sugar glucose control very good, right? There seem to be something, they are talking about retinopathy guys, especially in uh, diabetic women. So if it is uncontrolled only, uncontrolled diabetes only, they are considering cesarean section okay so these are the uh, relative indications can you revise the relative indications guys just tell us the relative indications for uh, cesarean section relative indications so lastly we'll come here we saw diabetes which is uncontrolled pelvic tumors vesico vaginal fistula then what else did you see here when you have written diabetes always write hypertension also very good
hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, very severe cases. Then uh, preeclampsia severe they have written, but eclampsia if it's uh, uncontrolled fit, yeah, so again severe. So if there's a bad obstetric history, uh, recurrent fetal loss, then uh, induction failure, failure of uh, uh, failed surgical induction of labor, is it? Failure to progress in labor, then malpresentation, we told you breach, shoulder, that is transverse lie, bro presentation, etc. There has been some antipartum hemorrhage, could be a placenta previa plus abrupt show placenta, etc. Dystocia, that is, um, uh, what is dystocia? How, what do you, how do you define dystocia, guys? We told you it is because of three things, the passenger, passage and uh, what else, what is the other P? Power, uterine contractions are not sufficient. But what exactly do you mean by this dystocia, which is written here? Dystocia. Dystocia meaning is actually prolonged or slowly progressing labor. Okay, dystocia is prolonged or slowly progressing labor. Then, fetal heart rate is not reassuring, so it is not at all good. Um, previous cesarean delivery if she has had, especially if they have given some conditions here, well, it was because of some contracted pelvis. So the primary cesarean was because of some reasons like this one, like there was a contracted pelvis, okay, or she has had two cesareans before, or there is a dehiscence of the scar, the scar that was there uh, because of the previous cesarean, there is dehiscence of the scar. What do you mean by dehiscence of the scar? That means it is kind of giving up, it is bursting open, splitting, it has not ruptured yet, but it may kind of. And there was a classical caesarean done before. Classical caesarean means what? Classical means they did not do a lower segment caesarean, right? It is a midline uterine incision, right? See what they are doing here is a lower segment looks like. See if this is the uterus, lower segment if they do, a lower segment is kind of fine. But if they have, if the previous caesarean section was a classical caesarean section which is actually not done much at all. So basically this will be an indication for pre, uh, for this current caesarean section. So this classical they are saying they will do only if they are not able to uh, access the lower uterine segment. Okay or there could be some other specific indications for classical caesarean and cephalopelvic disproportion. Okay, So these are the indications. We have seen the absolute indications and the relative indications. Now let us look at the common indications. Why in the world are caesareans being done? What are the common indications? The common indications is in the primary gravida they are doing because there is failed indication, induction. I am thinking it is induction. Fetal distress, if there is fetal distress, they will do. Okay, this we can understand. Cephalopelvic disproportion, very good. This they have to do. Dystocia, dysfunctional labor. So, this is like um, you have, you are in labor and then they are doing a cesarean. That's really irritating, isn't it? Non-progress of labor. Okay, then malposition, malpresentation. So, malpresentations, we told you malpositions. So, all those breach and uh, bro presentations, etc and transverse lie etc. So they are saying occipital posterior breach presentation. So occipital posterior is what? Definitely it is a cephalic presentation right but still they are doing a caesarean section because it is a malposition looks like. <coughs> then coming to multigravida because of previous caesarean section because some antipartum hemorrhage she is having that is placenta previa, placenta abruption, malpresentation again you will talk about the same thing okay. So these are the common indications for caesarean. We have looked at the absolute indications, relative indications and the common indications because of which caesarean is done. That's all for now in this video guys. Bye bye.